What's up guys, this is the Board Game Roamer and I wanted to do a quick unboxing of Tiny Epic Quest. Um, <laughs> this is actually not in the shrink wrap. Uh, it's it's funny, I did this a couple nights ago and um, I thought that I had messed up the footage and apparently I had not messed up the footage. But uh, anyhow, I went all the way through, the, through it and uh, thought I had messed it up, but kind of worked out. I had some things that I had set aside that I wanted to talk about and I actually did set it up after the fact and uh, do a little bit of a, I guess, a, a one-turn playthrough just to kind of get a feel for it. I had seen the videos, but I wanted to do it myself. Uh, but like I said, this is a Tiny Epic Quest by Game One Games. I actually own uh, a couple other Game One uh, titles, Tiny Epic Galaxies, their uh, recent expansion, Beyond the Black, and Tiny Epic Defenders. Uh, Tiny Epic Galaxies was actually one of the first uh, games that I owned when I got into uh, board gaming, so uh, pretty excited about this. So uh, I, 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 it amazes me how many, uh, how much of a game these guys can pack into the box. Uh, but it's the standard uh, Tiny Epic series size. Um, there's the front, uh, a lot of spot UV on there. I don't know if I can really, yeah, you can see a little bit there. But a uh, real thick box, nice sturdy box. Uh, pretty pretty cool picture on the back. Um, just kind of give you an overview of the game. If you can see it, see here. Essentially, you're laying out this grid uh, to make a a city, and it's uh, you have the uh, same positions for your castles, but uh, where everybody starts out. But of course, it's going to be set up different every time. You shuffle the uh, tiles essentially and lay them out, and uh, then go from there. But uh, anyway, let's uh, let's take a look at what's in the box. Oops. So, of course, we have the rule book. Um, really nice QR code. Uh, like I said, I had I had a uh, flip through this the other night, and uh, the rules are pretty good. Uh, they do have some uh, some things to help with symbology, like the dice uh, symbols. Um, it's got a pretty good breakdown of the turn turns uh, you can see there's a lot of uh, iconography in the book to kind of help you really see what's going on a lot of good examples so I was actually uh, really pleased with the rule book um, see so I just set this to the side and pull these things out kind of a couple at a time here so the first thing is a dice uh, pretty standard dice not really anything different uh, and uh, you can see some of these faces. You basically have uh, attack, energy, where you take damage, some magic, and then some exploration sides um, with uh, scrolls and torches for that. Uh, and what you're going to do is there's essentially two phases, a day and a night phase uh, or adventure phase. Uh, and that's when you roll these dice. And it's essentially a pressure luck mechanic. So these are going to become uh, very important. Um, and it's... Like I said, it's one to four players, but what you roll on your turn, some of these symbols uh, affect you. Some of them will affect other people. For instance, um, the energy, the uh, attacks, and uh, the magic, I believe. Here's all. Let me just see if I can get all these sides out. I'm going to miss a side, aren't I? Right, yeah. So there's some of the sides there pretty good stuff All right, I'll put those over here to the side um, let's start with uh, we've got these cards here uh, each player has um, this adventure card which uh, on the front gives you a little again the die symbols and there's a specific order that a specific order that you resolve them in uh, and it will tell you what that order is so you all have one of those uh, and then on the back uh, at the night during the night phase as you continue and you decide to stop adventuring uh, then you flip this over and uh, it's got some instructions there but everybody gets those there's uh, up to four players for that then you have uh, these cards which are the movement cards. Okay. Uh, so there's basically five different cards. 
There's uh, by ship by Griffin. Oops. By horse by raft and by foot. Um, and these will make more sense when I show you the uh, when you well from when you saw the grid uh, set up there. But these are what is going to allow you, you guys to move around on the field. Um, pretty good quality. I, I was kind of curious for the cards because you just never know um, how durable the cards are going to be. Um, they're not, you know, I, I can't bend them in half, uh, and I, they're not super super thick, but they're also not too bad. They have a nice uh, finish on them, a little bit of a texture to them. They don't stick together uh, very easily. Uh, and like I said, when I set up last, uh, the last time I set up, right after I did attempt to do the first unboxing, um, they did pretty well. So let's look at these cars next. So pretty much all the other, all the rest of the cards in here are quest cards, and there is essentially two different kinds of quest cards. All right, um, there are cards that deal with um, gaining. Uh, uh, well, all the cards essentially deal with gaining some sort of item or uh, energy or health or something like that. But a lot of them also deal with uh, gaining these these items, right? Right there, these items. So for instance, this is a bow. There's a ton of ton of these, which I'll show you in just a second. But um, there's two different kinds of quests. Some of them are things like defend, uh, just def uh, just complete the forest temple. Yeah. So. You're going to dungeons, you're trying to complete dungeons, um, and these are different cards that are in the grid that you're going to be laying out there. And other ones are essentially what uh, I would call map quests, specific positioning uh, on the map. Some of these are easier, some of these are very difficult, especially depending on how the map's laid out. Uh, and, and it's a really uh, nice balance between do I want to go for these quests? to get something from the quest, maybe because I'm low in power, low in health, um, maybe I want that item, or do I try to complete these dungeons uh, and some of these other things to get me more points, right? So I may have a dungeon that I want to complete, but it's not going to help me complete one of these. Uh, so it's pretty cool the way these quests work. And you can pick them up essentially as soon as you have completed them, uh, or at least some of them are a two-step parts and you as soon as you complete the first part you can pick it up to complete the second part so I, I do like that um, like I said there's there's a really a just a ton of cards here right and uh, this is a uh, this is one where it says advance your spell so they do a lot of different things but they're they're pretty nice I like them so the um, components wise, one of the different things for this are these item evils. Take one out of the bag here so you can really see it. So all the meeples, there's four colors, green, blue, red, and yellow. Um, but all of them have these little holes for the arm, right? Uh, and that is where when you score, like on that quest card that I just showed you, right, when you complete the quest and you get, say, the bow here, when you complete this quest, you can take the bow, and these item, these uh, actual items are pretty small, I mean that's enough for all four people, all four players to have one of everything, but you got, for instance, you got the the, the uh, shield, sword, shovels, boomerangs, pickaxes, all kinds of stuff. But you, you take it and let's say that uh, you managed to get the sword and the shield, right? So literally, to know which meeple has what, you literally just take, there's some pegs uh, that are on all the weapons, all the items, and you put them on your item meeple, and boom. Now you know this one has the sword and the shield, and they have different powers during the game to uh, do different things and so one of the things that I had talked about in another video that uh, didn't quite make it was when I saw this I thought that's pretty cool but a how hard are they to get in 
and uh, B, how hard are they to get out? Getting in is pretty easy. Getting them out, I was afraid because I did not want to bust the uh, the little notches on the back. But I mean, I was very surprised they pulled out super super easy. Not hard to do at all. But when they're in there, um, they're in there. They're not going to just fall out. So that's the uh, item meeples. Pretty cool stuff. Oh, jeez. Probably should not have dumped these out like this. That may have been an error on my part. This is new. Uh, as far as I know, uh, Gamelin is the first one to do this. Um, I could be wrong, so if I'm wrong, I apologize for giving them the credit. But I have not seen these types of meeples with this sort of item mechanic. Uh, of course, we all know we have tokens, but haven't seen one like that. Now, uh, I would also point out that the version that I'm unboxing is the uh, premium version, so there are going to be some things in here that um, are going to be uh, deluxe. If you get the standard retail, you're not going to get, for instance, here's some markers, uh, all wood markers for uh, health and magic. Uh, the first player marker, the round tracker, all those sorts of things. Um, you will not get that in the retail version. Uh, nice wooden components. Uh, I really was surprised with these because uh, in the past, uh, Tiny Epic Galaxies is a good example. Um, what I noticed on their wooden components was right along the edges, um, it looked layered. Uh, I don't know if that makes sense, but you could see the layers of wood or whatever the material was. And it had been painted over, and they worked fine, but I could see that. On these, I do not see that at all. Um, I mean, it's all really, really well done, all pretty smooth, real nice. So I was really, uh, really happy to get that. Um, this is uh, some more tokens for the game. This is actually what you would get, so if I open this up... Um, I'll show you these in a second. Show you those and uh, these markers. So your standard, your standard normal markers are just going to be these. Uh, I'm going to start the very bottom over here. Are going to be these kind of cardboard tokens, right? On anything super, super fancy. Um, here's some more tokens for goblins. Uh, some of the locations that you can potentially fight goblins and then on the back when you defeat it they all have different uh, rewards for defeating the goblins uh, so you're never going to know um, what you're going to get till after you defeat it uh, also one of the one of the cool things that was uh, part of the stretch goals in the kickstarter um, is this dude right here and uh, let me get out the little other thing because at first, I'll be honest, when I first saw this in the stretch goal, I was like, eh. But now that I actually have it, uh, I can see how super, super handy it is. So this is the uh, the item rack. So you can actually take uh, all of the items um, that you have, those tokens that I showed you earlier, the swords and the shields and the bows and the lanterns and the bombs and the boomerangs and the shovels and the pipes and the all that. And... Uh, you basically set this up, right, and this becomes this becomes your storage for those items. So this this thing's got a, a bunch of different little holes in it. So you just push put a, put those all in these. Oh, you can't really see. It. Put them in all those holes, and it just sets off to the side, and uh, you can use that to store the item meeples. So thought that was pretty neat. Okay. So, here we go. Crux, crux of the game. So, uh, the game is played over a series of rounds, right? Um, and it is a series of um, five rounds. Um, and the goal is over here on this point chart, um, looking at quest completed, enemies uh uh, goblins destroyed your spell levels you get 
uh, variable numbers of points uh, depending on how many of those things that you have or what level that it's at and you also notice down here that it says uh, legendary items four for each so for all those items that you're getting with a quest not only are you getting the benefit of those items for the duration of the game but you're also getting points at the end of the game so that's pretty cool gives you a reason to go for them um, and not not necessarily just focused on one of these three things a little bit a little bit more variability there which is nice <clears throat> also um, as you play through uh, you're gonna have a spells the magic track here this magic track um, is going to track the spell levels that you've learned again that that goes back to this this chart over here right so depending on what spell level you are uh, that will determine um, your points that you get uh, so you'll each be moving along this track uh, during the night phase is actually when you'll be using this track up here as you're rolling dice when you get the uh, this little mushroom symbol over here right you're gonna be moving a, a marker up this track which is great as you move along until you get to like level two and three which you know is a pretty far leap um, hard to do because as you get to two and three then all of a sudden you're you're not getting energy and you're taking more damage from the attack so you kinda have to be careful and again that's part of the whole pressure luck kind of mechanic they got going on here uh, but this will help you um, get spell levels and again those spell levels will translate into points at the end of the game now I told you that this game is uh, one to four players it does have a uh, solo uh, mode, and that is not a afterthought. That is not a variant. That is actually part of the game. It's not anything anybody made up. So you'll notice that this tracker up here in this corner says two to four. On the flip side um, is a single player, uh, and that is uh, what you do if you're going to play solo with it. So that's nice. It comes that way. Then you have your player boards over here. So uh, these are the same kind of uh, these, the round tracker, the magic tracker. These are all the same thickness and all the same type of uh, stock as the boards, uh, excuse me, as the cards, the quest cards. Uh, but you, everybody has one of these. It's upside down. You're gonna be uh, tracking your life, your energy. Um, you're going to be uh, everybody can access these three weapons and you can see uh, when you equip these weapons they all do something different right and again all those other weapons that we saw the bomb the lantern the shovel the uh, loot all those things will do something similar to this uh, or I think I'm pretty sure they do I haven't completely read through the rules so I may be wrong but they for sure get you points but I believe they also do things too powers wise <clears throat> but um, You'll, you'll use this card to track, like I said, your stats, your health, and your energy. That will, uh, the max, you will have a max. For instance, you start out at six health and three energy, but as you conquer temples, as you gain spell levels, as you do some things, those maxes will actually increase and, and go further up. But you're working uh, essentially to complete dungeons. In order to unlock these items. Now, one of the cool thing about this, these boards, is if I look at the, for instance, this green player, the sword requires it looks like uh, the forest and the water temple, right? But if I go over here to the yellow player, tops the same, right? I still still have the uh, sword short, uh, sword sword uh, sword shield and wand. My laugh, uh, my health, all that stuff's the same up here. But you notice that the uh, order is different for the dungeons. So uh, I did I did like that because it means that we're not all going for the same thing at the same time necessarily, um, which helps uh, let you do you know you're not really locked in as far as uh, having to decide you know this is always the optimal starting maneuver. You know it's not like chess. If they do X, then I'd have to do Y because that's the best thing to do. Um, so. The uh, more the board, the map that you create is made out of these, uh, these cards. Um, just to give you kind of an idea, these are about the standard poker size cards. So it's 
essentially two of these cards, right? Size wise. But uh, each player has a uh, castle um, that they have, which is basically their home base. Now you'll notice on these cards, you have uh, it's kind of like a north south and a east west deal going on. So east west is a road, north south is a river. And these north south and east and west, this roads and rivers, are part of horses, rafts, um, ships to a degree, right? How you move around and how many spaces you can move depending on whether you choose foot or horse or raft or griffin or whatnot, sometimes it's dependent on these roads, right? And what's on them. Various gob when the goblins come out, depending on what state they're in, depending on where you start and end, you can flip them from being passive to aggressive or vice versa. Then you have um, these other tile cards, map cards. Uh, they will have, for instance, this card has a a goblin and a um, what they call mushroom grotto, which essentially a mushroom grotto is um, a special place you can go to get an, an immediate effect. Um, and and uh, so they're very handy. Now, the thing is with these cards, with these map tiles, is even though there are two locations on this map tile, you have to pick one or the other. So I can only go on this map tile when I go to it with my, with my uh, meeple. I can only go to the goblin side or the grotto side right you're not landing on it and you get the effect of both you have to pick one or the other and when you're moving if it says you have to move you know move one for instance by foot in any direction I can't go from the goblin to the grotto actually you have to go to the complete next card so uh, you know you have to kind of make a choice there which one is more advantageous for you and then uh, You've got cards that are like this that have a dungeon. This is the water dungeon. It's got a spell. Uh, you can learn different spells. Um, and when you place your out, you got here. This is what you're trying to learn at night. So you may or may not learn it. It's a gamble. You know, depending on your die rolls, you may not do so hot, and you may have a, a meeple sitting here trying to learn this spell. Never happens because the marker doesn't get up far enough, right? Um, and the, the other big thing are the temples. And so you can see here on this particular temple uh, has a, a map icon there. There are other temples. If I can find one, oh, here's a good example. Other temples that have a torch icon over here. And uh, these icons, as I said, both of those icons are on the dice. So when you're rolling, some of those that you resolve first, energy, attacks, um, the magic those all go towards everybody but the uh, dungeon uh, dungeon sides which are the maps and the torches you resolve to move your uh, meeple start them in the dungeon and move down this track to, to defeat the dungeon when you get to the treasure chest and that's going to get you that unlock on your card for those legendary items now, one of the cool things, too, that I like about these is the order here. One torch, one torch, two torch, two torches, right? If I flip this card over, this is the night side, uh, or what I call the night side. But essentially, this is a more difficult side, right? So if you want to step up your game, you can do that. So you'll notice that the torch count is a little bit different there. Right? You have a few, you go one, two, 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 instead of one, one, two, two. Uh, and and all the cards uh, have that, all right? So you can see there's like the night side, and then there's the day side. So you got a little bit more replayability if if you're if you're worried about well you know once I play through it solo once or maybe a few times just because of, you know the different layout of the map and I'm going to be done and there's not going to be anything to do. I don't think that's going to be the case uh, because you have this whole other side that's a lot harder and. You know, there is a level of luck here. Uh, obviously, smart placement can mitigate some of that luck, but there is a level of luck here uh, with these dice rolls because really, the dice rolls are really what are going to really determine uh, a lot about what happens to you. So I don't think even if the map's similar, these dice rolls can drastically change the way you play your game uh, based on the outcome. Now, 
All right, guys. Uh, sorry about that. <laughs> I forgot to uh, delete some of the stuff off the card, so it actually filled up right before I got to this very last piece. Uh, so I just had to import everything and uh, restart this process. So uh, sorry about that. I'm still learning this. Um, anyway, this is the last portion. Uh, this is, uh, I believe, only in the deluxe. Uh, I'm not sure if it's only in the Kickstarter or not, but this is a special uh, pack. Kind of, uh, if you're familiar with uh, any of the game on games, especially Tiny Epic Galaxies and its expansion, there's always uh, sort of a mini game, uh, an add on to the base game that's just something to do. Uh, it gives you a few more points, a few more uh, options uh, to kind of give you a little bit more game, uh, add a little bit of replayability, and it's something that was unlocked during the uh, Kickstarter. So um, that's what this pack is. It's called the Golden Mushrooms. Uh, there are... Well, let's just open it up and see what there are. So again, if you don't have the deluxe version, um, I do not believe that this will be in it. I'm fairly certain that this is in all the deluxe versions. Um, but don't quote me on that. I don't think this is Kickstarter specific. Uh, but there's uh, three more cards. Um, day night cards. You'll notice that uh, on these, that grotto, oops, excuse me, that grotto uh, is now golden. Uh, it's the golden mushroom. Um, they look like they all have goblins on them, uh, and of course, they have the uh, the night sides, right? Just like the other cards. Um, and they come with these little mushroom. Right, so if you're a Mario fan, you're gonna love these. Uh, and then a little, this little book here is just gonna tell you uh, how to, uh, when you go past them, what happens, uh, how you um, add them. Right, uh, just a little short, five, what six, seven pages, super short. But you know, it's a cool addition. Uh, Game one, I really like that. Uh, they do that a lot that sort of thing a lot where they add these little little things and you got two or three little things and they're not game breakers necessarily uh, you could certainly just play with the base game and not add them uh, but they do you know let you as you play get a little bit more playability just have other options um, you know when I as a matter of fact when I first got tiny epic galaxies uh, I did not have um, the satellites and super weapons expansion and to be perfectly honest with you, I don't always play with it, um, but you know, it's still worth it. So that's uh, Tiny Epic Quest, awesome game. Uh, if you get a chance to pick it up, I would highly recommend it. Um, not a huge amount of real estate uh, compared to a lot of other games, uh, and definitely, definitely a lot of fun. Uh, I had a lot of fun with just the two player that I set up to run through. One turn just kind of get a general feel uh, after my <laughs> debacle of an unboxing the other uh, other night, but uh, uh, I look forward to trying the solo uh, after I, I get the rules down. Um, there are some videos out there already for rules. It's not like I said, it's not difficult. The rule book's not hard to uh, read through. Lots of good examples. Um, this is definitely a win in my book, uh, and uh, so hope you guys enjoyed this. I look forward to playing with you guys in the future, and uh, uh, time to go get your game on. Thanks, guys.